Hey guys, it's Jake from Side Door Media back with another video of just about recording your vocals in the Audacity. I almost said Pro Tools. You know, in the right settings, your your gain level, how to you know clean them up and stuff like that. You know, not a long video. Just the main thing is gain. Okay. And, and first thing to know before you even start recording is you're going to want to set up your project at least at 48 hertz. Um, you could do 41 if you want. And 24 bit, or I would do, I would do um, 32 bit. And work in mono. There's no, there's no need to even do stereo, you know. So do those two things first, you know, get your session started like that. So I really want to talk a second. I made a picture. Okay, guys, I made a funny picture. This is my Photoshop skills, my GIMP skills. Um, I just wanted a reason. I wanted a reason to use these cute emojis that Android stopped using. But anyway, um, this I want to explain because this is a thing a lot of people get wrong. Gain is not volume. Okay, so when you're working with a two track and you're recording, you know, yourself or a friend and you're having a hard time hearing yourself over the beat, don't go to the gain and turn it up. The gain is not a volume knob. The gain is the get a good signal if you have a problem with the volume go to your two track and turn it down because I've said in the recording basic video we're working in 24 bit bit depth or 32 bit depth that gives us a ton of space so you can turn down your the volume on your beat and then when you go to master you're bringing everything back up. So don't worry about, you know, you the vocals in your headphones. You can't hear yourself. You got to turn down the beat. That will just make you louder. And when we go and do our gain for our mic, we have to look at three things on the meter. And... I'll pull up Audacity in a second and, sh and show you. We have to know about the noise floor, clipping, and then we got this area in the middle with our cute little emoji man with his rose. Um, so we have the noise floor, and the noise floor is all the low-level sound that's just put off by anything in the environment elect electrical uh stuff you know probably in your preamp there's going to be a low level noise just there there's going to be your computer if it's nearby uh, a fan the air vent all types of stuff that isn't noticeable till you crank that preamp you know when you're trying to crank it to get the volume up you're going to put that into your signal and that it ruins it ruins a track okay and another thing when we're turning up that preamp too much is we're going to clip now clipping only happens in the digital domain and analog like tape it handles clipping it's not clipping it saturates saturates the tape so it it gives off actually a nice sound. That's when, you know, when you use these tape emulation plugins and you kind of, you know, push it too hard, you can get some nice sounds out of it. So in the digital domain, you're looking to work within the sweet spot. Okay. So these are kind of like your guidelines. So you want to be above... 18 dB FS, which it means full scale. FS means full scale. 
Some of these terms are going to be a bit confusing, but just know that every DAW uses this scale. And if you're not sure, look in the manual, Google, find out does, you know, like say you're in Reaper. Is Reaper's uh, default meters DBFS? Go and see. So we're going to work between 18 dBFS and 6 dBFS. In this range, just the way that things work from the analog to digital domain, this is the sweet spot. Now it's fine if you're going a bit below or going a bit high. That's fine, you know, when you get loud at certain moments in, in the song, you're, you're going to go up. The thing is, is you don't want to clip. But if you do clip, just go back and listen. Sometimes it's not even that noticeable. So, you know, you won't even hear it. You can keep that take. That's why it's good to have, like, another guy recording you because they're going to be watching for that, you know. Um, so just stay in the sweet spot. And let me pull up Audacity. No, not, what am I doing there? So this is your meter. So here's negative six, right? And negative 18. And I read on the, the uh, wiki that Audacity runs for their, for the program. They say you can go up into the yellow, which I think is like negative three. But if you're working in 24-bit or 32-bit, like I said, you're going to have all this space to work with. That's above the noise floor and below clipping. You're going to have this area. You might look at the waveform and it looks weak or something. It doesn't matter. If you got enough gain to where you're in that sweet spot, it, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter at all because you're going to use your your mixer's going to put plugins on that bring up the gain afterwards. So don't worry about that. So let me just go open a session. It was this one that we used on another example. And I just want to talk about punching real quick. Um, I guess I'll do it. You know, I figure I do in this video too. And that when you're punching in, I know in, in Audacity you can't overlap a section with a punch in. But like say this was a punch in, you know, like this stuff sucked. So you you're like, I'm taking that out and I re-record it. A few things to remember about that is when you're coming back in, give yourself some lead in, you know, so start recording a bit ahead and just catch the flow, start recording then and then trim it because you want to get that the same energy and the same performance. So you're, you're in, in beat and it doesn't sound whack, you know, don't worry so much about the volume changes is because as long as you're, like I said, you're in your sweet spot when it comes to recording. Even if it does sound louder, when you go and mix it, you're going to do compression and, and a bunch of stuff that's going to level everything out. So you have to watch for the performance. And a good spot to come in is on a breath. That's what I always do with the uh, artists that come in is we'll use a, an, a spot where they take a breath in the take as a jumping off point for the punching. So just keep that in mind. And um, Oh, and another thing is, you know, before you send out this stuff, clean it up. Like, let's say you had, um, let's say your punching looked like this. So there was some overlap, right? You know, these two words. And from if you if you watch this, you know, the other video I did on 
exporting stems. What I would do is combine these two, you know, get rid of this, clean this up. Unless you want that layered, because when he pulls in, he's going to see it layered like that. And the, the engineer's going to wonder, does he want that layered or does he want it cut? You know, they're going to assume some stuff. And just to save time for you and for him, it's better to clean up the audio as you can. Now, if there's something you did a really hard punch in or something and, and you don't want to go in there and cut off the audio because you're not sure if you can get it right, leave it. And, and when you email him or talk to him, whatever, like a good idea is to send like a text document to, I want this on the, I would like to see something like this on the hook, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're giving your thoughts of what you want. And then say on, uh, verse three, what is this? 20 seconds, make sure to cut off that, that front end and, and then splice it together, you know, or whatever. Just give them a heads up so they're not, you know, because if you're going back and forth, you know, maybe you're working with an engineer who only allows two revisions or, or whatever. Be very detailed at, at, in, in your instructions. So I think that's it for this video. And um, I think the gang thing is the major part. You get that right. And, and you'll be good.